Now, while Obama is trying to get Wall Street to stop fighting and get behind these financial reforms, will his proposal even bring the change needed to fix the problems that helped cause the financial crisis in the first place? Well, here to weigh in on that is Gerald Salenti, director of Trends Research Institute. Mr. Salenti, thanks for being here. Now, you've been critical of Washington's attempts at financial reform of Wall Street for a while. I'm curious, what does this proposal lack in your opinion? Where is it missing the mark? Well, it's missing the mark right from the start. First of all, let's look at the people who deregulated the industry. They're the same people that are in Obama's White House. Larry Summers, his chief economic advisor. Gary Gensler, the head of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. I mean, it's the same people that deregulated that are now being asked to re-regulate. I mean, only somebody that's completely out of their minds would believe this. Let's look at more of the facts. Where did President Obama get so much of his money from? What, over a million dollars from Goldman Sachs employees, several hundred thousand dollars from Chase, several hundred thousand from Citigroup, and then go down the list. Christopher Dodd, Schumer. Christopher Dodd got over $10 million dollars from the financial institutions between 2005 and 2010. This is just another episode in the presidential reality show to make people feel like they're doing something. Well, also, you know, I want to talk specifically about regulations. Do you think Wall Street can even be reformed? I mean, are the problems fixable? You've argued when we've spoken before about bringing back Glass-Steagall. Some critics say even that wouldn't have stopped the crisis, you know, even though it may have limited the spread of it to so many sectors. So, you know, isn't some attempt at reform better than nothing? Well, it's better than nothing. They're doing a little bit with the derivatives. But, you know, the derivatives aren't the major source of the problem. That's become the whole hype. The major source of the problem is Federal Reserve policy. And now look what they've done. President Obama is bragging about the new tough consumer protection. Who's watching over it? Oh, the Federal Reserve. It's, they're in charge of it? I mean, this is, as I said, this is like the fox watching the foxes. No, so the whole thing is corrupt from top down. Look what's going on. President Obama's chief counsel, uh, Greg Craig, is now working for Goldman Sachs. The Goldman Sachs gang, Wall Street's hijacked Washington. This is only show. That's all it is. And any critic that's talking about how Glass-Steagall wouldn't have had this happen, they don't know what they're talking about. And I'll give you an example. President Obama read in his talk today, he quoted what from a Time magazine article in 1933 of how shocked Wall Street was with the new regulations. Well, in 1933 is when they began to pass the regulations such as Glass-Steagall that prevented Wall Street from becoming casinos that gambled. So no, this would have worked if they put back in real regulations that counted. Okay, well, if this is just a show, as you're arguing that it is, why are Wall Street lobbyists fighting it in full force in Washington, D.C., as we're hearing has been reported? Because they're money junkies. They want every penny that they could squeeze. They want to make up all these gambling tricks so they could keep going on. Look at the money that they make. One guy makes, what, $7 billion by betting, creating nothing? This is only, it's, again... It's gambling. That's all they're doing, and they want to keep it going. It's not in anyone's interest in Wall Street to stop it. Look what the kind of executive bonuses they cut up among them. What, $45 billion, three companies? Yeah, they don't want it to stop. Speaking of interest, there's something I want to ask you about. Last week, we saw the SEC slap Goldman Sachs with fraud charges, you know, accusing the firm of defrauding investors because they didn't inform them that certain mortgage investments were devised with help from someone who was betting on their failure, in this case, a hedge fund. But Wall Street insiders I've talked to say they think the mainstream media is totally missing the mark here with this story, that this is politically motivated, that what was going on at Goldman Sachs and with this particular security that the SEC is targeting this is the way it's always gone and that there's always someone going long and going short in these securities as the hedge fund was in this case and that Goldman is a middleman responding to demand and in essence can't really be blamed for what was going on in a you know for fraud what do you think of that 
Well, look who they picked in this Goldman Sachs case, some 33-year-old guy way down the totem pole. They do this all the time. They knock out the little guy in the firm, they make an example of him, and the big guys get off the hook. Even if they find Goldman guilty, it'll cost them what, a couple of hundred million dollars, which to them is chump change. Again, considering, you know, we gave them, what, $13 billion just to bail them out of their bad bets with AIG. Ten billion dollars to turn them into a bank holding company, and the billions of dollars they cut up in executive compensation. So this is only show. And another thing that's really important to understand is that the Obama policies are the ones that are creating the too big to fails to make them even bigger. That's a fact. And the other fact is page 1,379 on the bill. When you read it, it allows the FDIC to bail them out regardless. So all this talk that the taxpayer is not going to bail them out. Yeah, when it comes down to it, the taxpayer will hold the bill again. All right. Well, thanks so much, Mr. Salenti, for your insights today.